Hi, it's Wednesday, October 9th. We're watching Hurricane Milton's final approach to West Central Florida, moving northeastward, landfall just several hours away now as of this recording. Expected sometime late evening or maybe late night hours local time, but it's moving in quickly now and some of these bands are already moving ashore, bringing hazardous winds with them. This was a Category 5 hurricane again last night, but it is now in its terminal weakening phase, which we expected. Max winds are starting to decrease, which is, you know, some good news, but unfortunately some of these hazards like storm surge are going to be major regardless of the ongoing decrease in max winds. But we will hope for as much degradation of the storm structure as we can possibly get before landfall. We are now getting southwesterly shear applied at moderate to strong levels. So you can start to see a little bit of erosion on the western side of the storm, and you'll see that in the, on the radar picture in a second. Sinking air and dry and cool ingestion beginning to impact the eye. This is the recon data from the U.S. Air Force aircraft currently flying through the storm. You can see that it found a pressure of 932 millibars earlier, which is on the rise. It was in the 910s last night, so that's indicating indicating that weakening trend. However, that's still extremely low, characteristic of Category 4 hurricanes at that value. And you can see that a lot of wind energy is associated with the circulation with a pressure value like that. This field of purple, which is hurricane force winds at the aircraft flight level, about 10,000 feet up, is much more expansive now, especially on this east side, relative to the times I've shown you this plot over the last couple of days. So the storm is unfortunately growing as it comes ashore which is a concern because it will be pushing more water. So the storm surge expected to be a major impact, even if the very maximum winds in the eye wall are coming down substantially as the storm comes into the coast. This is the radar picture from the National Weather Service. And you'll see there's the eye wall. There is still at least a partial one there in the inner core. So that's the center of Milton. As you saw on infrared imagery, there is some degradation, at least on the southwestern side. We're starting to get some sinking air as that dry, cool air mass starts to wrap around the western side of the hurricane a little bit. And so the expectation, as it has been for days now, is that in terms of the heaviest rain and maybe the strongest winds, we'll be seeing mostly the north and northeast side of the circulation, seeing these strongest bands and that northern eye wall will likely remain in some form as the hurricane makes landfall, but perhaps drying out a bit on the south side. So at least in the southern part of the Florida Peninsula, south of the landfall point, not necessarily expecting a ton of rain, which is a good news for flash flooding concerns, but there still could be localized flooding due to bands like this, you know, coming ashore and bringing very heavy showers. Notably, we've also had discrete supercells out ahead of these spiral bands, and there have been tornado warnings repeatedly on these cells over the last couple of hours. So do be careful and have a way to receive a tornado warning if you happen to be in the wrong place relative to these cells. With this band, we've also had increased winds starting to come ashore. This is the observation showing the red numbers indicating wind gusts over tropical storm force now in places like Naples, which actually had gusts over 50 at one point in the last hour. Same with Key West, gusts have been over 50 at times. And we're seeing tropical storm force winds start to creep up the coastline here from Charlotte Harbor northward as some of these initial outer core bands start to come in toward the coastline. The strongest winds will be, of course, close to the center, and uh, this uh, eye wall fragment, especially once it moves ashore, will be bringing the strongest winds with it. And all of this southwesterly flow on this side of the storm, you know, going to be causing water level rises. We're not seeing significant rises yet, but those will begin as the onshore component of the wind uh, begins to push water towards the coastline. Now, if we look at the infrared loop again, you know, in terms of the landfall point, this will end up mattering for certain locations, most notably Tampa Bay, whether or not the maximum surge actually comes into this area. That will depend on where the landfall is relative to Tampa Bay. This will be a bit of a nail biter until the last minute. We've been talking about this at little track wobbles. Uh, will make a difference in that particular location. On the storm's current heading, it would end up in the mouth of Tampa Bay if it doesn't change direction, but there is a slight bend toward the right expected before landfall. So right now, the official forecast in most modeling brings the storm essentially into Sarasota, plus or minus a little bit, but you know, it's not much of a wobble back toward the north for this to end up in the mouth of Tampa Bay. So in terms of the storm surge that is expected, 
We know that near and south of the landfall track, we're expecting extensive water level rises on this side. On this side, it's a little less extensive and it's a little more dependent on exactly where the eye goes, but we're just not gonna know until the last minute here as it's coming into the coastline. Is it going to make a little hook toward the right or is it going to continue a little bit longer and end up in the Tampa Bay area? We're just not really gonna know. It's just based on wobbles at this point, just not something we can predict with precision. But this is the general area of the coastline that this is coming into tonight. We know that much now. If we look at a radar depiction from the HASB model of what you know the radar could look like as the storm is coming in, here's the Florida coastline right here. Here's the eyewall structure of the storm that starts to erode a little bit on the south side. And you'll see that asymmetry as the storm is coming into the coastline, mostly to the north and northwest is where the eyewall remains defined. So perhaps some of the strongest winds will be in that band to the north and very uh, powerful hurricane force winds across Tampa Bay, even if the onshore flow is focused to the south. So on this run, the storm kind of comes into Sarasota. So of course you'll have, you know, mostly easterly or northeasterly wind in the Tampa Bay area. Of course, because of the local geography, that could still mean that there's a lot of storm surge flooding on the western side of these inlets and bays. And then keep in mind that as the storm moves inland, there will end up being a northerly component to the flow that can still flood places like Bradenton, uh, where the, the flow becomes onshore as the eye goes by you to the south, if indeed it does pass toward the south. You'll see there's dryness on the south side. So again, not a lot of storm total rainfall to the south of the track, which is good news, but to the north of the track, so along and north of the I-4 corridor, expect repetitive heavy bands of torrential rain that could cause extensive flash flooding concerns. And in fact, there is high risk, according to the Weather Prediction Center, for flash flooding in this corridor. You can see the, the wind map here, just showing you the, the hurricane force wind field, which on some models is expected to be strongest to the north and west of the eye, where that eye wall remains defined. But you can see the extensive area of tropical storm force winds pushing onshore flow into places like Charlotte Harbor, which is expected to see major storm surge, along with the Fort Myers area and all the way down to Marco Island and Naples, expecting significant water level rises that could be life threatening. Hopefully everyone in evacuation zones under evacuation orders has left if possible. Storm surge is one of the most dangerous hazards and we'll hope for the best here, but somebody is going to get a lot of surge as this comes into the coast. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast. You know, again, we're very close now to landfall. The forecast track is essentially into Sarasota, but you can see, you know, there's always a little plus or minus in here based on the last minute wobbles. So it'll be a, a little bit of a nail biter for some in terms of the maximum surge and maximum wind, but major hazards expected regardless across really this whole area. You can see the extensive area of hurricane warnings in red here, potential for hurricane force gusts all the way across the peninsula as Milton is making its journey across. And on the other side, there is going to be a band of strong northeasterly wind. I can probably show you that here. As it interacts with a ribbon of cold air, you are going to have this lane of flow that will be onshore causing water level rises and the potential for hurricane force gusts. It may or may not be exactly in this spot where the model has it. Some other model runs have it a little bit farther north along northeastern Florida, but it is going to be causing storm surge concerns even on the eastern side of Florida. So you'll see the water level rises expected several feet here in southern Georgia and northeastern Florida on the back side. On the front end, of course, the, the strongest surge, the most dangerous impact of this storm you know, is expected. This is showing a reasonable worst case based on the track. So this Tampa Bay value of 8 to 12 feet probably won't happen if the landfall is actually south of Tampa, but if it ends up, you know, going right into the bay, you know, that could happen. And even if it goes south, there's still going to be flooding in certain areas based on the strong hurricane force winds out of the northeast and east that will be occurring on that side of the storm. Of course, extensive water level rises south of the landfall will be occurring regardless and for a longer distance than to the north of the center. So all the way down here to southwest Florida is expecting significant storm surge levels that will cause significant inundation of many communities in these areas, uh, Charlotte Harbor especially vulnerable, and uh, the Cape Coral area in Fort Myers, you know, obviously quite vulnerable. This will not likely rise to the level of Hurricane Ian in some of those areas, uh, but it is going to be highly significant and dangerous 
for those there. So please heed local officials and make sure you're safe as the storm is coming in. And finally, just a depiction of the flash flooding risk. We're really narrowed down now on this corridor here. You can see you know, near and especially to the north of the landfall point where we're expecting that northern eyewall to be continuously dropping really heavy rains, lots of banding on that side. Again, you can already kind of see how this is shaping up on the radar picture. The south side is a little bit drier than this north side where you have an extensive area of very heavy rain on the north side of where the eye is. So expect that to continue and flash flooding, something to really take seriously here. It's really not just about the, the power outages and, and hurricane force wind gusts inland. It's, it's really the water on the roads and the flooding that can potentially occur. So please be careful. Don't drive in flood water and uh, make sure you're staying safe and aware of that risk. That'll be about it for this video. Probably my final video update on Hurricane Milton. Landfall will be occurring tonight. And at this point, the forecasting is almost done. We're, we're just watching it come in now. We'll see where the exact landfall ends up being. And we'll just be hoping for the best here. We'll hope for as much degradation of the core structure of the hurricane as we can get. And we'll hope that the storm surge levels you know, aren't as high as they could be. But hopefully everyone is prepared for the worst just in case and that you're out of the evacuation zones if possible. Very dangerous life-threatening hazards will be spreading over a large area in the coming hours and into tonight. And I hope everyone is staying safe. I will continue posting what I can on my Twitter, at Tropical Tidbits. You can follow me there on X for a few more frequent updates as the storm is coming in, as I have the time to post today. I do have a day job, but I will post as I'm able to throughout the day. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.